What's up guys, it's Cam coming at you from the 2-6. Welcome back to Carolina Fragrance Reviews. <sighs> Welcome to the life of an adult child. You wake up, it's time for coffee. You take a shower, it's time for coffee. You go to work, it's time for coffee. Come home and film, it's time for coffee. And then you drink some more coffee because you're about to die. That's why I look like I'm out of it half the time. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys like eight of my favorite coffee fragrances. Let's get into this. Now for all the white chicks out there, you know, you guys like the pumpkin spice and all that in everything this time of year and the grocery stores are just full of it. So I guess everybody really gets into coffee this time of year, but I actually live off of it year round just to try to like keep toothpicks out of my eyelids, even though it looks like my eyelids are about to shut most of the time. So I've assembled eight of my favorite coffee fragrances. Yes, there are plenty that I have left out, but I'm gonna try to go through these as systematically, kind of quickly if possible, and tell you why I like them. And I've also named them, you know, like whether it be a Mocha Cafe or something like that, just to kind of give you an idea of where it transport me. These are all like take you either to a coffee shop or a vacation where they have exotic coffees or whatever. You'll see what I mean. Okay, so the first one kind of reminds me of a cafe latte. And for those of you who don't know what that is, that's pretty much just coffee and milk. And the fragrance I'm talking about is none other than Mancera's Aude or Aude Cafe. This fragrance uh, is like, got a great pear note. If you think about pear and coffee, you wouldn't quite think that works, but it does. A lot of people hate the opening of this fragrance. I happen to like it. It is a little bit synthetic and I know that's part of the reason. Now, I don't know what it is about me and some of these weird openings on some of these Manceras and they put some very odd notes together. But it also has a bit of a creaminess that really reminds me of kind of like milk, you know, milk and coffee. There's some other notes in here that I don't really get, but uh, the pear is one of them that I do get in the opening. And some of those other notes that I'm talking about that I do get that are in here, and some of those notes that I do pick up are amber, woods, coffee, and musk. Some people have compared this fragrance to the elusive Bond Number no. 9 New Harlem. Uh, I had a decant of New Harlem and I still actually have just like a little bit in the uh, bottom that's just about gone. I see what you guys mean, but there's something about New Harlem to me that just reminds me of breakfast. It almost has like a syrupy smell. It could just be me, but either way, you know, coffee and syrup and I don't know, we won't put bacon and eggs in there. I think we'll be okay. I'd say that this has above average performance the projection is kind of moderate but still a great fragrance and great to wear in the fall and winter next fragrance i have dubbed like a dark roast espresso and i have talked about this fragrance a little bit here recently it is halloween man x this is a fantastic cheap inexpensive coffee fragrance that just works you know and is actually kind of unique for a cheapie especially you know a lot of people you know, on them cheapies they just be like okay let's just put bergamot lemon and some musk in there and keep it moving they actually put a blackjack accord in this which is actually leather whiskey and a dark roasted coffee note it's like a very full bodied dark roasted coffee note in this other than being unique this is a very masculine fragrance it may not be for everyone but out of all the Halloween man fragrances I've smelled, I think this one is the most unique and the best and one of the absolute best coffee notes. Even though it's like uh, not the most natural smelling fragrance, that coffee note is on fleek. And not only that, the performance and projection on this fragrance is actually pretty darn decent. So, you know, 20, 25 bucks, you cannot beat it. If you want a coffee fragrance and you don't have a bunch of dust to spend on it, Halloween Man X. All right, the next one I have dubbed as the Cafe Mocha. It is Atelier Cologne's Tuberosa Cafe. This fragrance is so freaking good. If you like the note of tuberose, you're gonna love this. If you don't like the note of tuberose, there's still a chance you might like this. This is sweet. It almost has like a chocolatey vibe to it. And even like the tuberose is like a sweetened tuberose, if that makes sense. You know, a lot of florals are kind of eh, 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 and even tuberose can be eh. But this is like a, a sweetened tuberose. The coffee note in here is to die for. It has a chocolatey cocoa in here. You know, like some cocoa is just like bitter cocoa or whatever. It's like kind of a, a rich chocolatiness to it. And I don't even 
think that chocolate is an official note, but I, every time I spray it, there's like a chocolatey up underneath it. So call me crazy if you don't get that. It also has like some bergamot and cardamom in here as well. And the cardamom is actually pretty darn sick as well. Shit, that's good. Whew. Now this fragrance to my knowledge isn't supposed to be like a super attention grabbing fragrance or a compliment magnet. I have never heard it you know, coined that way or anything, but I was actually in KFC, I think it was, if I'm not mistaken, ordering some dinner one night and I actually walked inside when you could still walk inside of a restaurant or these fast food restaurants anyway. And the girl at the counter, she's like, dude, you smell great. And she called a couple of her coworkers up and they were, you know, all up there, you know, smelling like fried chicken and me smelling like this. So it's like chicken and coffee <laughs> and a big old mess. But it was awesome because I love it when you get like mass compliments at once. Um, you know, you don't have to have them, but it is cool when you get them. The sillage on this is not bad. And I would say that the performance is moderate, a little, you know, maybe maybe just a tad better than average. And uh, I think that the, the sweet aspects of this, the way that they're, you know, really pulled in here with like that chocolatey goodness with that sweet sweetness and that tube rose. I think it just really holds it in, makes it last a little bit longer. The freshness from the bergamot is really nice on the opening, but that dissipates pretty quickly. So I think the way that this was developed, I think it was, you know, kind of seared in where it would help with the longevity a little bit. All right. I want you guys to be honest with me. Have you ever had a coffee shop affair? Meaning either you hooked up with somebody that worked at a coffee shop or you might have been, you know, just meeting somebody on purpose at the coffee shop or maybe not on purpose and it wound up being something else. Yeah, me too, if you said yes. So the fragrance I have dubbed the coffee shop affair is from Tom Ford's private blend, Cafe Rose. I know some guys are gonna be like, nah, pass, Rose, eh. This is definitely unisex, but it is definitely dark, mysterious, sexy, alluring, all the above. I think it works great on me. I know some other alpha males like me who absolutely adore this fragrance. So sample before you buy, these buggers are not cheap at all. But if you want to, you know, step out of your comfort zone a little bit, this would be a great one to, you know, test your testicular fortitude with. Some of the notes in this are amber, coffee, black pepper, and obviously rose. Now this is not like a super thick jammy rose in here. I think this is like very skillfully blended. At, yes, you can tell that the rose is in here, but I think that those darker nuances mix with that. If you've ever smelled anything like Noir de Noir or something like that, it's in that type of wheelhouse. It does seem to have a little bit of that chocolate vibe in a way, not quite as much as the Noir de Noir, but it's you know in that sexy wheelhouse if you've smelled a fragrance like that. This is definitely attention grabbing. This is gonna be more of like that dressed up date night, black tie affair, you know, special outings, whatever the case may be. You know, definitely this dress to impress. Cool if you fragrance. This would actually be one that I would wear to a coffee shop affair. Both projection and performance on this fragrance are definitely above average. A good solid eight and a half to nine hours of performance and two hours easily on projection or sillage. Okay, the next fragrance I would categorize it as an Arabica coffee bean, which is not quite like a super, you know, dark, robust i think they're even called a, a robusto or you know it's like just a really robust this is not quite there it's very well blended the coffee note in here is good but not super dominant and the one i'm talking about is pure coffee from teddy mugla's a man line i even thought about busting out the og it has coffee in it as well but the og is more along like gourmand territory and i already have some similar so i think that the there's a little bit of bitterness in here a little bit of earthiness with the patchouli i actually like this fragrance a lot i know a lot of people are you know they don't like it um they're not impressed with it they feel like it's just uh there that way you have like all the bottles lined up or whatever. I have heard that I don't know how many times, but I personally like this, but I also like Pure Leather and several other fragrances that other people hate from the Amen line. So some of the notes in this are obviously going to be coffee, and then you're gonna have some musk, some patchouli, as I mentioned before. That patchouli in here is going to give it that little bit of darkness, slight earthiness. Um, I wouldn't say that it's 
getting out of the gourmand territory completely, but this is not as sweet as the original Amen, where I would say that's like full on gourmand. So if you want something to just back it off just a little bit from being too sweet, this still does have a sweetness about it. And the coffee note, ironically, is not as dominant as you would think where it's being called pure coffee. So it's kind of a, a catch 22 in a way, but it is a very enjoyable fragrance with slightly above average performance and projection. Next fragrance I consider the Vanilla Ofogato. So if you don't know what that is, is taking vanilla gelato and then taking one or two shots of espresso or a shot of espresso and a shot of like Bailey's Irish cream or rum or whatever. A lot of people like to put alcohol in it. There is not any alcohol in the notes of this. It just reminds me of that type of fragrance, of course, primarily because of the vanilla and the coffee. So it would be the non-alcoholic one, but it would still be fun to have that type of drink. When I was in high school, I went to Europe and I was, I think it was like 16 maybe, 16, 17 tops. And we just went to an ice cream parlor, but everything there had liquor in it. And my teacher's like, dude, did you really go in there? I was like, yeah. She said, can I try it? I was like, yeah. So that worked out all right. She said, don't you order no more. I was like, Yes, ma'am. But the fragrance I'm talking about, since I got off subject with that you know, random thought with cam time, is Mystic Experience. And that was a Mystic Experience I was just talking about. And this is from Initio Parfums Preve. This is the second or third fragrance that I smelled from Initio, and it was like love at first whiff. Now I've said before, and I'll say it again, Initio Parfums Preve does somewhat of simplistic type fragrances, but it's one of those deals where less is more, and the natural ingredients in here are undeniable. I think they're very high quality. This smells absolutely amazing. It's sexy, it's sweet, it's seductive, it's unusual. It doesn't smell like any other coffee fragrances I've smelled, but some people have compared this to Nazamato's Black Afghano. Uh, there's no ganja in here or no cannabis note. I'm gonna spray it again. I mean, I got like a, just a little, yeah, yeah, just a, a little hint of it. I, I, I don't know, I don't wanna, <sighs> I mean, I get it, I get it. It's just, a, it's a little bit there, but I mean, some people are saying this straight up smells just like it. And hey, maybe to your nose it does, to my nose, kind of, sorta. I, I, at least I understand what you mean, how about that? This is deep, dark, sexy, sweet. The musk is to die for. That's where the sexiness comes. And if you want to throw that black Afghano twist in here, okay, well, let's just say we'll like lower the amount of hashish or whatever it is that's in black Afghano that just gives it that real, uh, that, that pungent, like thick ganja, you know, like just that resinous, like really, really resinous, like, you know, just where they've been sitting there like plucking weed all day and just getting it out of their hands like that. You know, I don't know if you guys have ever, somebody told me it was done that way. But um, anyway, no, no ganja in this. It's not super resinous. It's much sweeter with a kind of sort of black afghano is type thing. But sample before you buy. These are, oh God, they are not cheap. And I mean, Nazimato, people fuss about them, but you know, they're a buck, buck 25 if you're smart when you buy them. So I'd still say definitely, sample Black Afghano too, because I know a lot of people can't stand that fragrance. I think it's great. I absolutely love it, and I love Mystic Experience. Next fragrance, I could only think of just going on like some sort of exotic vacation, you know, sitting on a yacht or a big cruise liner or something, uh, one of those river boats that go through those really nice places in Europe or something. It is Zerzhov's Coffee Break or Golden Dollar. This is a really, really good fragrance that um, I think a lot of people are sleeping on. I have seen a couple people mention it. I think that some of these Zerjoff fragrances are highly overrated. Now I'm not saying that that goes, you know, like across the board, but there's some of them I'm like, eh, okay, it's all right. You know, especially look how much they are, man. Like, okay, I'm good player. But this one is actually hype worthy. And um, unless I just haven't heard about it, it hasn't had any hype. But as far as like a, an exotic, very deep and dark and rich and mysterious spicy coffee fragrance, mm, this is gonna get the trick done. 
Now it's very sweet. You get a lot of cinnamon right in the beginning. There's tons of spices. The coffee note is done beautifully. They actually use coffee absolute in here. There's also some oud in here. So you've got a little bit of woodiness, spiciness, sweetness, the coffee. It smells very regal, very rich, very well, you know, like bold bodied and, you know, just fantastic. I mean, just think, you know, got your feet kicked up, you know, you just got through checking the stock market and you just got through, you know, making $100,000 in about four hours or something. That's how this smells. Way above average performance, way above average projection. You might want to go, yeah, not might. You better go easy on the atomizer with this. You will definitely choke somebody out. And I ain't talking about more than words choking somebody out, but you're getting in the, you know, the same neck of the woods. Last but not least, I actually named this my Turkish coffee while watching the uh, belly dancers, like really super hot belly dancers, because this is a very, very sexy and seductive coffee fragrance. And it's very addictive. You guys know what it is, right? Come on, come on, come on, give me a shot. Yes, it is intoxicated by Killian. Sweet, sexy, seductive, just like, I mean, I actually used to work as a chef at a Mediterranean grill on Friday nights, like once a month, we'd have the belly dancers coming in, Lord of mercy, yeah. It's like hard to cook and pay attention and never mind. It's deep, it's robust, it's sexy, it's just like, this is like the best coffee fragrance. Yeah, Black Phantom has coffee in it too, but this is like more coffee. That's a lot of other things too, but as far as just like a really, really good, fantastic coffee fragrance, Intoxicated is amazing. So the three primary notes in this are gonna be coffee, vanilla, and cardamom. So you guys know about what cardamom does. You know like vanilla across the board for me is just like all that and then you throw in coffee in the mix and then of course, you know, put Killian on the label and you know how Killian does with the dark, mysterious, sexy, seductive, alluring type fragrances. Let me get a sip of my coffee because I'm gonna fall asleep. No, I ain't either. Cheers guys. What is your favorite coffee fragrance? Let me know down in the comments. Check that subscribe button. If it's red, please turn it gray. Your support means everything to me. Let's get these numbers up. I appreciate you guys. Until next time, I'll see you on Carolina Fragrance Reviews.